When it comes to video editing, having an optimized computer is essential for my business. Being able to execute a creative choice or idea with no lag in the timeline makes editing a much more enjoyable experience. So this is it, my current editing build for the end of 2020 and beyond. When I was first starting my freelance career in video production, a custom PC was the first major investment I made. I dropped around $1,500 on the first initial build, and over the years, I've been making more and more upgrades until finally now, I have a rig able to crush any task I throw at it. So to start, let's first talk about the processor and one of the main reasons I always choose an Intel chip over AMD. Number one is the performance boost you get while working in Premiere Pro because of something called Quick Sync. This increases the playback and rendering performance with H.264 media, which is perfect if you work with mid-range cameras that often produce this codec like Sony, Canon, and DJI. As well, Premiere has been designed to not get a significant performance boost past eight cores. This signals that you should always choose a chip that has a higher clock speed. However, if you're planning on doing a 3D work in Maya, Blender, or edit in DaVinci Resolve, I would opt for an AMD chip, as those programs thrive on CPUs that have higher core counts. But things are always changing and programs get updates. In the future, AMD might be a great fit for Premiere Pro, but because of this limitation of eight cores, sticking with Intel makes sense for me. As when it comes to RAM, I have 64 gigabytes. And the main reason for this is because I often work with two or more Adobe programs open, but more importantly, RAM is used to cache preview files when video editing and will make playback much smoother when working with 10-bit 4K footage. As well, After Effects loves high amounts of RAM when working with projects with tons of visual effects. For solid state drives, I use three. And this is because the best way to achieve optimal performance in Premiere is to spread the load of different file types across multiple drives. This is because hard drives can only read and write to one source at a time. Therefore, slowing Premiere down if it's trying to read and write from one drive. So you can solve this by having a multiple drive configuration. I have one dedicated to my operating system and applications a second for my active projects, and a third for my media cache. Having this hard drive setup is not essential, but can give you a slight performance boost while editing. I have two more six terabyte hard drives I use to store my finished projects. So when a project is finished, I can drag and drop it onto one of these drives and then use a service like Google Drive to back everything up. This is super handy if a client asks me for footage from a project that I completed like two years ago, and I'm like, geez, where is this? I can go to Google Drive or just search in one of these drives and find the exact footage that they're looking for and send it over to them. Now moving on to the GPU, everyone's favorite component in a computer, including myself. I've been working with the NVIDIA GTX 1080, which is roughly two years old, but still packs a punch while editing. One key here is to have a GPU with a high CUDA core count. This will assist when using added effects in Premiere Pro, like doing color grading, stabilizing clips, adding transitions or anything else, the GPU will assist massively here in playback performance. Also, a recent update to Premiere allows you to export using NVIDIA NBank, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but tests have shown that exports are four times faster when using it. This is only available with NVIDIA GPUs, which is a huge time saver when rendering out multiple projects. Now, this is one of the main reasons why I prefer NVIDIA over AMD, and of course, the gaming benefits that a NVIDIA card has over AMD. Just thought I would put that in there. NVIDIA is so much better. People who like AMD, just, just get out of here. Just, just leave this video. Just joking, stay, watch the rest. My last two components are my Gigabyte Z390 motherboard and my 270 watt power supply. The main reason why I chose this motherboard is because it offers Wi-Fi, which in some cases I do need if I move my computer to a new location and I have no access to a LAN cable. But to be honest, this is pretty rare. But also the fact that it has a ton of USB ports and a USB-C port was a major deciding factor. For power, I've been using the same unit for more than five years and never really have seen a need to upgrade unless I do end up picking up that RTX 3090 
then I probably will be needing to get a new power supply. Now, I hope this video has given you some form of guidance on what you should look for in a video editing build. I am, of course, not a professional PC builder. Everything I've learned to build this computer from creators whose job is to test and give guidance surrounding this topic. Uh, I'll be linking some of my other favorite creators down below if you wanna dig into any of the points that I mentioned. Other than that, if you made it this far into the video, leaving me a comment and liking this video would be much appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.